Alft. Thanks for watching Daytime, everybody. You know, I have always had two athletic goals that I've wanted to conquer. Once I could afford them, of course. The first was the Antarctica Marathon, which I shared with all of you last year. And the second would be climbing Africa's highest peak. So my husband and I recently traveled to Africa to reach, as Hemingway put it, the snows of Kilimanjaro, or at least what's left of them. Trekking poles in hand and bloated packs on our back. A handful of new friends and us Floridians are led by an army of energy and ambition to Africa's highest peak. Whew. Today we begin our journey to 19,340 feet. That's the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. It'll take seven days to get there. And that's six days longer than I'd prefer to go without a shower. Whew. Kilimanjaro, also known as the home of God by the locals, is comprised of three volcanoes. Elias and Mahina are guiding us up the western breach route to Kibo Summit. And it'll be quite the uphill battle to get there. Only 9,000 more feet to the top of Kilimanjaro. Over there. Some say this is the most scenic route. It's unbelievable. But it also provides the maximum time to acclimate. One boot in front of the other, we ascend slowly, or poli poli, as it's said in Swahili. Poli poli. Poli poli! Yep. Slowly, slowly! Yeah. Yet already it's beginning to feel like we're hauling bricks. But really, it's the porters who do all the hard work. For 10 hikers, there are 53 porters who carry enough supplies to create our home away from home. This is our tent city, our mini mountain village paradise. These are all the hikers' tents. And then over here, these are the porters' tents. Look at how much bigger they are. Jimbo! We conquer more and more vertical, charging over a landscape that's becoming more barren. And then, at around 13,000 feet, we're overcome by the Barranco Valley. It's a stunning Alice in Wonderlandish landscape filled with full flowering cartoon-like plants, all shaded by the great breach wall. Despite the Barranco's beauty, climbers quickly get preoccupied with other endeavors, AKA the egg dance. Now that is called talent. But soon enough, we'll realize that this is our last laugh as the real high altitude trek begins. From this point on, we don helmets to climb up the rough, rocky wall. Good job, guys. Yep, this is the Great Western Breach. It's gonna take six and a half long, grueling hours to go 2,300 feet up there. Bendy! Eighteen thousand three hundred feet, crater camp. It's our last stop before the summit, where the nausea and headaches come rushing in. But nothing could prevent us from admiring the camp's cruel yet beautiful environment, which hosts a smattering of massive, melting glaciers. And. Kibo's sizzling crater. All those miles of vertical. Day after day, suffering like our primal ancestors. Hello. Forging for Hello. food. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Santi. Coffee, please. Asante sana. Guys, walk off. Asante sana. Enjoy, guys. Asante. But with great force and determination, we overcame these hardships and reached the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. In conditions too cold for a video camera, or even some warm-blooded Floridians. 
Now the hike took a total of about seven days and to prove that I actually did hike Kilimanjaro, here is my certificate. Now, hey, if you're planning on hiking Kilimanjaro or going on any high altitude trek, well, Leanne Watts from Adventure Outfitters has guided many a climber up this mountain and other mountains as well. And he can tell us some tips that we really will need uh, to keep ourselves healthy throughout the climb. Thanks for being here. Glad to be here. All right, now let's first talk about <sighs> what it takes physically to climb Kilimanjaro or any high altitude trek. Right. We ask first that people be honest with themselves. Um, really any fit person, reasonably fit person, should be able to do this, but there's some preparation involved, um, especially aerobic preparation. You, you need to be fit enough and be able to just breathe. Um, I like bikes because it gives you repetitive motion. Oh, good. Because as you know, you have to shut your brain down and just let your feet go. Yes. So uh, bicycling is a great way to do that or just, you know, uh, Stairmaster, something where you can just stay in one place, shut your brain down and move. And stay in your place, uh, stay in one place for a long period a of long time. A long period of time. All right, you know, there's also a lot of gear that you're going to need for a trip like this. Let, let's start talking about some of this. Waterproof bag is essential. Absolutely. The porters are going to carry most of your gear in a bag on a trek like this, so you want a big, tough bag to, to travel with. And then a backpack. This was my backpack. It's really disgusting if you look at it. It's all dusty. It's a good bag. This is what you'll carry and, and tell everybody what you'll have inside of your own bag. Well, you're going to carry some of your basic stuff. You're going to carry, uh, you know, your aspirins and, and um, your... Uh... Yep, yep, your certain <laughs> pills. He's trying not to say it. Basically, your emodiums, your Pepto-Bismol. You yep. will need those for your stomach Absolutely. and diarrhea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, raincoat, rain pants, uh, possibly a change of socks, your snack foods for the day. Um, on, the, on the higher portions, like the summit portion, I like to carry a, a, a thermos full of something warm to drink, just kind of bring you back to life. Um, Snickers bars are great for that. That is, any candy is wonderful and for your that. Water, and your water. So how much do you think you'll be carrying on your back? Because this is also part of the preparation. When you're training, you should train with the backpack on. For the lower portions, you know, we don't mind if somebody's carrying 12, 14 pounds, but it, it, as little as possible as you get higher for your summit push. Um, you know, you're going to have a big, the bulk of it's going to be the big puffy jackets and that sort of thing, but you don't want to carry a lot on the final the final summit push for these oh, things. Oh, no, because that's when you will be crying. I, <laughs> I promise you on that. We all cry. You know, finally, as I mentioned, you've been to Kilimanjaro several times. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the amount of snow decline in the years that you've been there over the years? Uh, not really. Um, a, a, as you saw, as you go over the summit, you kind of see over to your left-hand side the big spectacular ice cliffs, sure. and they're hundreds of feet high. Um, the glaciers have kind of dissipated about 75% in the last 100 years. Mm. And I think what you're seeing now is, because it, there, it's a big piece of uh, ice sitting on black pumice, the sun's hitting that black pumice, and it's they're melting faster. Sure. But that's probably the reason for it. But I haven't really seen a lot in the last several years. But, uh, but you do say. Change. We had two inches of snow last year on the mountain. <laughs> Can you so believe that? We didn't have any beautiful, snow. Beautiful, beautiful snow, yeah. And, and he says, hey, if you do want to see the snows, go now because they Absolutely. are, they are, going, they are away. going away. Leon Watts, thank you so much. We Glad appreciate to be here. it. Hey, if you mm -hmm. want to connect to him and his guide service, just go to daytimeonline.tv. Now, still to come, we're dishing up a healthy recipe that your family is sure to love. So stick around. The following portion of